Funding for this program made possible by Ohio County Tourism. Thank you for your support. A piece of the world was being, would be missing, like Hodgensville didn't have Lincoln uh, or any of these places. Uh, and and it, just, it would just it would just be it'd be sad. I mean, this is just one of those things that we just can't let go. Bluegrass actually uh, was the b b leading edge on a lot of music. Uh, rock and roll would never existed, and country music would have been boring without the bluegrass influence. And this straight came from Bill Monroe, and Bill Monroe's here. I mean, he's ours. And this was this was where he was uh, raised until his parents passed away. He well, he was born on on the ridge here, real close to where this house is. This house was built when he was a small child. Uh, he lived here till he was uh, up in his upper teens. His mom died first and then his dad. And when his dad died, he moved into Rosine uh, community uh, and uh, lived with his Uncle Penn, which he wrote the song about Uncle Penn. The county owns uh, five acres surrounding the home place here, uh, Square. And the entire farm that was purchased from Charlie, I think, sometime back in the 70s is about a thousand acres. About 15 years it's been up and, and going. Bill Monroe is from Ohio County. And Bill Monroe started an art form called Bluegrass Music. Uh, and whether he actually discovered it or whether he invented it, it started with Bill Monroe and it started here. And it would be a crying shame not to uh, capitalize on that and bring people to our county to uh, uh, you know, to enjoy it, and uh, and this was ended up being the logical place to come. In 2002, um, we had the first festival here in in uh, October of 2002. The festival lasted for four days. It would be Thursday through Sunday, and I would just be walking on cloud nine the whole time because of all of the the wonderful things that people said about how beautiful it was, how well it was run, and what it meant to sit down there on the hillside and listen to the music and be able to look up the hill and see the home where it all actually started, where Bill grew up. Just hundreds and hundreds of stories like that of people that just, just they just loved it, just absolutely loved it. The last one, we had a six-day festival, 2011. Uh, we were celebrating Bill's 100th birthday, and we stretched it out to six days from the four. And we estimated uh, around 18,000 that year. We had all the states represented. You always had this big map where you would punch the states when it came in, and we got all 50. You know, just to, to have this cultural icon in Ohio County is uh, does a great deal for us. It's part of who we are. Because this place made Bill Monroe who he was. Uh, you know, he, he may have, had he grown up anywhere else, uh, still been a good mandolin player, still been a good singer, but this place and this environment that he was brought up in created bluegrass music. So it's important for people to be able to come back to the roots of how it all started. And that's what we have here. And, and that's what you hear when you, when you take the tour of the home place is who was Bill Monroe and what made him into the man that he was. Bluegrass music is part of our identity, part of our character, part of Kentucky's personality. And if you took away the home place or if the home place didn't exist, that memory, I think, would begin to fade. We're here to preserve Bill's memory and Bill's legacy, because uh, a lot of artists even today are, are influenced by Bill's music that he created, you know, 70 years ago. So uh, he, his, his spirit still lives on. And if we don't uh, honor that and continue to educate people on what created Bill Monroe, then Kentucky loses a big part of its identity, I think. 
Well, I, I think it would eventually die out. It would, it would be lost. Uh, if someone doesn't make an effort to preserve it, but I think we really do need to preserve the Bill Monroe style of bluegrass music. We only had one father of bluegrass music, and uh, this is what all started. If we don't have local support in our county for keeping Bill's home preserved and his legacy, his music, uh, I don't know who else will. I mean, it's a home bluegrass music the way we said. It's really fantastic, it real the music. I love the music. And of course it makes you wanna your feet move too. <laughs> the fast, the fiddle, and the banjo makes your feet wanna move. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, you've got the Rosine Barn just down the road here, so Rosine really has a lot to offer, um, and not just the home place. So you really have a lot of bluegrass culture here, and we have more to offer than just picking on the porch at the home place. You know, you can see go see a show at the Rosine Barn on Friday night. You can go tour Uncle Penn's cabin. You can go see the gravesite where Bill Monroe is buried. Um, it's really a full package. He talked about this place, though, a lot. So Bill was off one weekend, which was really rare, and he came up here and he had to walk up the hill to this uh, house. And when he got here, nobody was here. And uh, it, he was saddened, it was, it, he was really sad at that. So Bill being the songwriter and the m man he was, the creator that he was, uh, on the way back to the car, he got most of it in his head. By the next uh, three weeks, it was a hit song. I'm on my way back to the home place. The road winds on up the hill. But there is no light in the window that shined long ago where I lived. 